in the book he mentioned, and I don't know if this is true or not. So I wanted to ask you, he said that, um, like he was the first case in military history that would go to jail for what he went to jail for. Do you think that was just him, his own personal opinion, or is that like a true statement there? No, it's not a true statement. No, it's his own personal opinion, trying to be a little bit of a martyrism. Um, I've seen people go to jail for a whole hell of a lot less than that. You know, and it wasn't just it, what, what he tries to make the, to say, I posted a video challenging the leadership and they put me in jail. Well, not really. You posted a video challenging the leadership, violating, you know, various rules. By posting that, you were given a order, a lawful, gen a lawful order to not do that. And you continue to violate that over and over and over. And then you start talking about, like, you know, I know he discussed it in the book, but saying, I'm going to burn the whole system down. I think that's the words he used and so on. So it wasn't that he was placed in pretrial confinement because he posted the video, because he posted the video over and another one and another one and continued to violate no contact orders. And so I think that's the leadership decided that we can give him all the orders in the world. Uh, he certainly wasn't a flight risk, you know, that's one of the, but he was going to continue to commit misconduct. So they placed him in pretrial confinement. Um, that's what I think happened. And so no, I don't think he's the first that's ever gone to pretrial confinement. Do I know of any other case where people have gone to pretrial confinement for posting a video? No, I don't. I mean, maybe that is the only one. But I know a whole hell of a lot of cases where people go to pretrial confinement because they continue to violate orders, where they'll commit misconduct, they'll be given an order to not continue to commit that misconduct. If they, Whatever that misconduct is, they continue to do it. I mean, just think about a drug case. Someone pops positive for marijuana. You give them an order. They don't do drugs anymore. Two weeks later, they, post po they, they come up positive again. Two weeks later, they say, hey, you can't you can't smoke weed. I understand it's illegal in a lot of states, but you're in the Marine Corps. You can't smoke weed. And he says, well, screw that. I have a I have a right to smoke weed. And, you know, I'm going to I want to I disagree with the military's position so much on smoking on marijuana. That I'm going to make a change. I'm going to make a change and, you know, let my voice be heard. And I'm going to go online and, and, and take a video of me hitting off the bong and you know, smoking weed. It's the same concept, really saying, hey. Generals, the leadership doesn't understand that, you know, us young Lance Corpus, we need to smoke weed, you know, you know, mm -hmm. and so then he does the second time or a third time, maybe a fourth time, they're going to throw him in pretrial confinement every time if that happens. And yeah, so yeah. is that really that different? You're, you're not only is it 112 Alpha, but you're violating a lawful order by not doing it. And so, you know, whether it's that, what if it's, you know, what if it's, I mean, you can go down the list. What if it's prostitution? You say, well, prostitution should be legal. It's legal in some parts of Nevada. I'm going to go film myself going and getting a prostitute and you get in trouble for it. And you say, well, I'm doing it again and do it again and do it again. And no matter what it is, whether it's weed, prostitution, uh, speeding, whatever the hell it happens to be, you may not disagree with, you know, the, the general military's position on it, want to change it, but it's never going to go well for you. You know, it's, it it's seems like the weed thing is probably the best analogy on that. Um, it's never, it's just never going to go well. Yeah. It seems like that's a recurring thing because you're, you're able to rattle off several, um, uh, ex uh, similar examples of somebody just moving with their position when they're when they're basically told to say, "Listen, you need to stand down," and they and the and the Marine or Navy or or the person in the military saying, "I am not going to stand down." That's where they're getting in trouble. So it is. Um, I mean, I, I hate the speed limits. I think speed limits are ridiculously low. I think speed limits haven't changed much in twenty, thirty years. But automotive, uh, but cars have, and the safety of vehicles have changed a lot. I mean, you can drive down to about any interstate in particular in Ford, and everyone's doing 85 miles an hour and you're getting passed. So I say, hey, my position is these speed limits need to be changed. So I'm gonna take a, I'm gonna take a video of myself doing 95 miles an hour and post it to show that how safe this is. Look, I'm just cruising down the highway at 95 and everything's okay. I post that, what do you think is gonna happen? And yeah. let's say I'm in the Marine, and, and then they say, well, we need to change it. And I say, well, let's do it again and again and again. So it's the continued flaunting of the authority which got in place in pretrial confinement. It wasn't the initial act.